Five bells. Stand by all stations. Attention, all districts. A five alarm fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's go. Let's go. Fire. Fire. <laughs> Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire! In just a moment, we'll join Chief Cody, Tim, and Editor Tom Culpepper in the Culpepper living room, where they've just learned some exciting news. The fateful election, the one that decided whether or not Tom's campaign for better fire protection for Plum Valley would be successful or not, is over. The return show that Turner Lawson, the do-nothing town council president, has been defeated by a three-to-one majority and that the candidate Tom supported is now in power. Just what that means in terms of action on Plum Valley's most pressing problem, fire protection, we'll learn right after this message. Let's go, firefighters. Let's go to the home of the fighting editor, Tom Culpepper, where Chief Cody, Tim, and the editor have just learned that Tom's candidate for council president has defeated Turner Lawson, the man who has opposed Tom's campaign for modern firefighting equipment in the town. That means that after a long series of costly and senseless fires, Plum Valley may now be in a position to adequately protect itself from the demon of fire. Well, in the flush of victory, it looks like Tom Culpepper has won his goal. But there is one thing he has not yet reckoned with, his old enemy, Turner Lawson. However, at the moment, as he answers the phone, Tom Culpepper is brimming over with joy. Oh, this is a memorable day, Chief, a great day. Think of it, we've defeated Lawson three to one. <laughs> Uh-oh, maybe that's Turner Lawson now demanding a recount. Oh, don't joke, son, I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yes, Bert. Yeah, I just heard the news. Congratulations. That must be Bert Barton, the newly elected council president. Yes, sir. Yes? You did? Oh, that's the stuff. You boys are really fast workers, I must say. Yeah. Yeah, you bet. Sure, I, I sure will. Uh, thanks, Bert. That, that's just what I'll do. Uh, Bert Barton, the uh, uh, new president. <laughs> it says right after the election they called an emergency meeting in the new council. Oh, say, that's action for you. Yeah, they've authorized a new fire engine, and tomorrow they're going to talk about organizing new firefighting personnel. Good oh. work. And, Chief, Bert has a suggestion, and I think it's a good one. Well, what's that, Tom? He wants me to ask you and Tim if you would stay over in Plum Valley long enough to help organize our new fire department. Well, what do you think, Tim? Oh, I'm for it, Chief. Sounds like a good idea to me. Good. Then it's settled. We'll begin tomorrow. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hello? Yeah? Well, that was a short conversation. Yeah. Who, who was it? Turner Lawson. Congratulating you? No, hardly. He says I may have won his run this round, but that he's out to ruin me if it's the last thing he does. Well, don't pay any attention to him, Tom. He's just mad over the election returns. You cool down. Sure. What can he do? The votes are counted and he's out. Oh, there's plenty that a man with Turner Lawson's power could do, but right now I'm not worrying about him. All I'm thinking of is that we've got a new town council, one that's already taken action on the dream I've dreamed night and day for this town. Well, just let Turner Lawson try to stop us. Why, with a new pumper, new hose, and other equipment... And with the chief and I training the men, we'll have a fire company that'll be the talk of the state. I'm sure of it, boys. And we begin tomorrow. And even though I'm pretty sure there's nothing Turner Lawson can do to stop us, I'm just wondering what that canny critter's next move will be. The threat of Turner Lawson to ruin Tom Culpepper and his plans for a modern fire department for Plum Valley are all but forgotten during the next few days. For with a job ahead, the job of building an efficient fire service in the town, neither Tom, the chief, nor Tim have time to worry about what the revengeful Lawson might do. Well, now, several days later, after an afternoon's workout with the shiny new fire truck, Tom Culpepper, the chief, and Tim are standing around the new fire truck in the fire hall discussing its merits with Luther, one of the full-time firemen. One of the most modern, well-equipped pieces of fire apparatus I've seen, Tom. She'll do everything. Yeah, sure is a beauty, all right. I think you got the hang of how to operate her, Luther? Uh, pretty well, I think, Mr. Culpepper. 
The chief and Tim here are pretty good teachers. Oh, Luther's a natural for this job, Tom. With his mechanical know-how, he caught on fast. With this truck, there shouldn't be a fire in town or out in the country you can't handle. Yeah, uh, only one thing I'm worried about, Chief. What's that, Tom? Uh, the pressure in our hydrant system. Oh. oh, we got water, but the pressure is poor, and that, that's what's made it so bad at the, at the cotter fire. You don't have to worry about pressure with this truck, Tom. No? no, sir, this pump will give you 500 gallons per minute. And for rural fires, there's a 450-gallon tank right on the truck. Yes, sir. I wonder what Turner Lawson thinks of all this activity. Have you seen him lately, Tom? Oh, uh, I've seen him all right. Matter of fact, I just had a meeting with him. Huh? Still making trouble? Well, for me, anyway. I had plans to take over the Cartwright building, you know, for my new newspaper plan. Yeah? Well, I was all set to move in next week. When today Lawson informs me that he now owns the Cartwright building. Bought it yesterday. So that means? That means I don't move in. And it's the only vacant building available in town. Hmm. Huh. He said he'd ruin you, and looks like he'll stop at nothing to do it, huh? Uh, but, Tom, couldn't you build a new plant? Oh, that takes more money than I got, Tim. What about the local bank? Turner Lawson happens to be the chief stockholder in the Plum Valley Bank. Hey, the phone. I'll get it. Oh, uh, don't worry about me, Chief. I, I'm not licked yet. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. You bet. We're on our way. What is it, Luther? Fire, Chief. Oh, I'll ring the fire bell. Oh, where, Luther? Out in the country, three miles west on the Washington Road. The old Dinkins place is on fire. The barn, I think. The thing is safe. This ought to be good. Come on, Luther. Get that truck started. He's ready, Mr. Culpepper. Let's get aboard, Jim. Uh, you know this place, Tom. Here come the volunteers. Climb on, boys. Uh, do I? It's called the Dinkins place, but it, it's owned by Turner Lawson. Let's roll, firefighters. And so the first full-fledged fire that the new Plum Valley Fire Department rolls to is a barn belonging to Turner Lawson. In a matter of minutes, the big, shiny new pumper roars down the Hoisington Road and pulls into the barnyard at the Dinkins' place. High on the peak of the big hip roof, a blaze is licking hungrily at the ancient wood shingles. As the truck pulls to a stop, the volunteers go into... All right, men, get that extension ladder up, just like we did today in Thrill. Hey, look at Luther take hold, Chief. Yeah, the kid really takes to this firefighting game. Yes, sir. Shall we give him a hand, sir? No, no, I think it'd be better to let them handle her alone. Oh, yes. Now, they're Chief. doing all right, and I've got a reason. Look who's just arrived. Uh-oh. Turn a loss. Oh, hello, Chief Cody. Do you, do you think they can save it? I think so, Mr. Lawson. The boys of the new Plum Valley Fire Department seem to have the blaze about under control already. They've got to save that barn. There's $10,000 worth of grain in it and tools and all You stuff. don't have to worry, Mr. Lawson. See, they're bringing a stream to play on the fire now. Say, that's quite a pressure they've got there. Yep, 850 pounds per square inch. And what's important, the new volunteers know how to handle it. Yes. Yes, I see they do. Why? They've knocked the fire out already. Yeah, yes, Mr. Lawson. With modern equipment and trained men, a majority of fires could be put out before before too much damage has been done. Well, it's incredible. Now, when I heard about the fire, I was sure that old barn would go like a tinderbox. Well, I don't like to say this, Mr. Lawson, but it probably would have a few weeks ago before the new fire service was organized. Uh, gentlemen, I'm afraid I owe you both an apology. Well, boys, I... uh, the boys did a bang-up job, didn't they? Oh. Oh, uh, hello there, Lawson. Hello. What do you think of the Plum Valley Fire Department now? Culpepper, I was just telling Chief Cody and Collins here, I've been a mean, pig-headed fool. Oh, not quite that bad, Mr. Lawson. I'm a stubborn man, gentlemen, and it hurts any man to admit he's been wrong. But this demonstration today has convinced me that you were right, Culpepper, and I was wrong about the need for a new fire department. Your truck and the men the chief has trained have saved me many thousands of dollars, and I'm grateful. Humbly grateful. Well, any man can be wrong. The important thing is to have everybody in the town of Plum Valley united and back of their new fire service. You can be sure it has my backing, Chief Cody. And Culpepper, uh, about that uh, Cartwright building, you can start moving your presses in tomorrow. Well, Lawson, this is certainly a surprise. All bad feeling forgotten, eh? I'll forget if you will. Well, that's good enough for me. Shake, Culpepper. You're the best darned editor Plum Valley ever had. Although I must say, next to me, you're the stubbornest man I ever know. <laughs>
Well, with the feud between Turner Lawson and Tom Culpepper settled, and the new fire department well launched, Chief Cody and Tim will be saying goodbye to Plum Valley. They didn't get much fishing done, but they had the time of their lives helping the fighting editor overcome the apathy of the town and establishing a modern, up-to-the-minute fire department. Well, there'll be more exciting adventures ahead for them and you, too, in the next thrilling true-to-life episode of The Firefighters. In a moment, Chief Cody will be back with a word for all of you boys and girls. But first, here's a message. And now, Chief Bob Cody with a message for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. Hello, boys and girls. There's an army that guards your life night and day. No, not a military army. An army of firefighters. There are 800,000 firemen maintained on a 24-hour basis throughout the United States, ready to protect you and your home from fire. I tell you this to impress upon you the vast importance of fire protection, adequate fire protection in your community. For the nature of fire is such that even those 800,000 firefighters can't do the job alone. They need the cooperation of every one of you in the never-ending battle with uncontrolled fire. Remember that, will you? And do your part in helping the fire service in your community. Well, that's all for now. Till I drop in the next time, so long. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it! Let's go! Let's go! Firefighters! Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.